10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go! Hi all, welcome to A Voice in the Desert. It's a pleasure to have you join us today in sharing God's Word with you. It's our sincerest desire that today's message will uplift you, strengthen your faith and guide you in your walk with Jesus Christ. And now we leave you with our host in today's message. Relax and enjoy. Hi, welcome to A Voice in the Desert. Great to be with you as always. Today we're going to be speaking about the Word of God like we always do when we gather together. The topic of today's message is Nocturnal Terror Dreams. As a Christian minister, it's my duty to address this issue and wisdom with guidance rooted in the Word of God. Let us delve into this profound subject and seek solace, understanding in the scriptures. In the book of Job, we see that Job himself experienced great suffering and distress, including troubling dreams. In Job 7, 14 through 15, the word of God says, Then you scare me with dreams and terrify me with visions, so that I would choose strangling and death rather than my bones. I loathe my life. I will not live forever. Leave me alone, for my days are breath. Job's words resonate with many whom have experienced the torment of nocturnal terror dreams. Dear brothers and sisters, these dreams can be a source of great fear and anxiety, but we must remember that we are not alone in our struggles. The Bible assures us in Psalms 34, 4, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Not some, but from all my fears. We must turn to God in prayer and seek his guidance and protection in the midst of these distressing dreams. It is important to recognize that dreams have been a part of human experience since ancient times. In the Bible, dreams often served as a means of communications from God. In the book of Genesis, we read about Joseph when he was given the gift of interpreting dreams. Through his ability to interpret dreams, Joseph played a crucial role in the moment of God's plan for the nation of Israel. However, not all dreams come from God. In the book of Jeremiah, the prophet warns against false prophets who claim to speak on behalf of God through deceptive dreams. Jeremiah 23, 25-28 says, I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesies lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the hearts of the prophets who prophesize lies, who prophesize the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal? Beloved, we must discern the source of our dreams and not be led astray by deceitful messages. When we encounter nocturnal terror dreams, we must pray for discernment and seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit to understand the true meaning behind these experiences. It is also important to remember that God is God of peace and not of confusion. In 1 Corinthians 14.33, we are reminded that for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. Therefore, if we are experiencing distressing dreams that cause us fear and anxiety, we must be assured that these dreams do not come from God. Instead of dwelling in fear and despair, let us turn to God's word for comfort and strength. In Psalms 91, 5, 7, we are reminded of God's protection in the face of danger and fear. You will not fear the terror 
of the night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that waits at noonday. A thousand may fall on your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Dear brothers and sisters, take heart in the promise of God's protection and deliverance. Even in the midst of these nocturnal terror dreams, we can find peace and rest in the assurance that God is with us, guiding us through the darkness and leading us into His light. As we navigate the challenges of the nocturnal terror dreams, it is important to remember the power of prayer. In Philippians 4, 6-7, we are encouraged to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made, to, be, be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Through prayer, we can help bring our fears and anxieties before the Lord and seek His comfort and protection. Let us not underestimate the power of prayer in overcoming these darknesses of our mind and spirits. God is faithful to hear our prayers and to provide us with the strength we need to face our fears. It is also important to seek counsel and support from our fellow believers. In the book of Ecclesiastes, we are remembered to be reminded of the value of community and the strength that comes from standing together in faith. Ecclesiastes 4, 9-10 says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Dear brothers and sisters, do not bear the weight of your fears and your anxieties alone. Reach out to your brothers and sisters in Christ. Share your struggles and seek the prayers and support. Together, we can find solace and strength in our shared faith and in the love of our Lord. In times of distress and uncertainty, let us also remember the words of Jesus in Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30 Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Beloved brothers and sisters, let us heed the call of our salvation from our Savior and find rest in Him. Let us cast our burdens upon Him and trust in His unfailing love and grace. In the face of nocturnal, eternal dreams, let us cling to the promises of God and find peace in His presence. As we conclude this podcast today, I urge you to hold fast to your faith and to trust in the Lord's provision and protection. Let us not be consumed by fear and anxiety, but let us stand firm in the knowledge that God is with us always, guiding us through the darkness and leading us into the light. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, God, your hearts and your minds, in Christ Jesus. Amen. Once again, my name is Caesar, and I am a voice in the desert. God bless you all. If you have realized that you can no longer continue your life the way it is now, if you want to be a follower of Jesus Christ, please say this simple prayer of confession. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge to you that I am a sinner, and I am sorry for my sins and the life that I have lived. I need your forgiveness. I believe that your only begotten Son Jesus Christ shed his precious blood on the cross at Calvary and died for my sins, and I am now willing to turn from my sin. You said in the Bible that if we confess the Lord our God and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. Right now I confess Jesus is my Lord. 
With my heart, I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. This very moment I accept Jesus Christ as my own personal Savior and according to His Word, right now I'm saved. Amen. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, please make sure you find a good Bible church. Welcome to the family of Jesus Christ. Tell your friends and family about us. Thank you for listening to today's episode. Thank <laughs> you.